and good evening my dear dudes and dudettes this is none other than light Liger here and today i'm going to be reviewing a centralized exchange called bitthumb global which is part of the bitthumb ecosystem which is kind of like binance where binance has binance uk binance us binance.com so bitthumb's main website is for korean users in south korea that's where it's based then there's bitthumb singapore and then lastly for everybody else there's bitthumb global which we're going to be basing our review here today and as a reminder uh, reviews are not to be taken as endorsements I'm merely giving my own personal experience what I had with the exchange not anybody else's uh, so first of all there are the actual numbers so 250 different coins available across 333 different trading pairs um, these numbers are different on all of the three exchanges, so some have less little, some have more trading pairs, and etc. And the fiat deposits are different. So the Korean version, obviously, there's Korean Vaughn. Uh, for the global, there's uh, you know the Russian ruble and the Turkish lira. Maybe only limited to uh, Turkish and uh, Russian users. And this one is um, established in Seychelles. I finally pronounced that right. And uh, this was established in 2019. However, the original BitThumb is around since 2014. So this is one of the oldest, largest, and one of the more trusted exchanges in the space. So this is like a true, like a behemoth in the uh, crypto space, so to speak. Very trusted and very established. Not many exchanges have been around for that long. Let's get started by, by looking through the actual markets here. What are the different trading pairs? So there's Bitcoin, obviously. Uh, there's Ethereum. Then there is Smart, um, a smart token, as they like to call it. And then there is DeFi, also available for these charts. You can also use Favorite. And also you can use Fiat tabs for Turkish Lira, USDT, and Rubble on Bitthumb Global. Now they have a pretty good spot trading system. So there's a basic version, which is basically a normal swap. Great for uh, normal users out there, which are not very tech savvy. I mean, I always tell people that spot trading is not really that hard. I think margin and future is a lot more harder to understand. But let's kind of go into the actual, um, you know, trading tab here. So kind of clean interface here. I'm not sure if there's a night mode available on this exchange. Seems to be the case that it's not. It's coming on multiple different languages, Korean, Chinese, Russian, Spanish, Turkey, French, and multiple fiat currencies can also be established. So you can kind of like filter them out and see what's up. And overall, the, you know, exchange layout is pretty good. I would say it's not too complex or anything. There's a market quick order as well so quick order guide in case people want to look into that and here's also the order book and there's a lot of other statistics here which you don't necessarily see in other exchanges which is good and then there's a bit of a quick order stuff here and that's pretty much for the actual interface and yes there is indeed a night mode here let's see if we can actually get it toggled on so this looks pretty clean too let's keep it on for the rest of the video then there's advanced and perhaps the advanced is more to my liking. This looks like exactly how it's on Binance, KuCoin, and other exchanges. I actually prefer advanced more over the standard. I think this is a lot more cleaner and easier to understand. You can choose whatever you obviously want to in the exchange. Um, but let's uh, kind of move on. So this takes the whole interface. So we have to backpedal here. Uh, then there is margin trading. And obviously, I don't have much to comment on here. The, you know, I don't use margins. This is on 10x. And it has fiat, a, you know, a couple of pairs here, which is good. Uh, apparently nothing for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Only for fiat, that is interesting. And um, then there is the, uh, sorry, the advanced margin. I think this is just the exchange we just looked into. Let's look at the standard layout. Um, maybe this is for like futures. I think it makes more sense. I'm not sure. Sell pressure, buy pressure. I have a bit of an idea there. Then there's the bull and bear, which is like, you know, predicting the bull bullish cycle or are we going for a bearish cycle? Um, this is interesting. So, um, we can buy long and shorts. 
uh, kind of more easier futures or margins. It's something I would probably dab my feet into if I had the time. I just find like daily trading a bit more time consuming uh, and the risk and the reward is not a good uh, for me. Then there is the smart token and these are kind of like some type of uh, tokens which are BTCS, I think it's like pegged into, I, I think like the hashing power or something, if this is the Binance one, if I remember right, I'm not 100% sure what this is actually. And there's some other tokens here. Some of them I don't know, some I do know. Um, then there is um, sort of a learning thing, which is similar to Binance Learn and Coinbase Learn. Uh, this requires some deposits and tradings and you get votes, quizzes and rewards. And there has been a couple of uh, Akash would have been great to be in, for instance. I don't know how frequent these is, uh, these are, but definitely uh, something you can benefit from by being an actual partner on the exchange. There is a staking feature for a couple of different, um, you know, coins here. Uh, I remember seeing uh, some type of, uh, well, there's not really that much different um, platforms. See, not something you would normally, uh, you know, think to have. Two keys, a good project, I guess. OM is there, um, and these are mostly ended here, so not a lot of seem to be going on. Uh, then there is actual mining. This is for Verus, and uh, this one I don't even know. DAC technology, interesting. Um, so there's a mining opportunities here, which you can participate on, and then there is staging, which is. I'm not really sure what this is. So basically, is this similar to the yield mining on Binance uh, exchange? Then there is the assets tab. And here you can see all the coins, uh, the tickers, no logos. So that's a minus. Some seem to be on, you know, maintenance. Some are not. You can also easily filter them out by, you know, searching for them. Let's look at the withdrawal minimums here. Okay, I gotta set that up and I'm not gonna do that in the middle of the video. Hopefully I'm gonna be adding that information later on. But in terms of the asset tab, it's it's pretty normal. Um, KYC I think is required in order to deposit to the actual exchange. I could be wrong about this. Um, let's see where we let's, let's try Kosh. No, actually it's not. So. I take a take that back. Uh, I have done uh, the tier one KYC on Python before. I don't really mind doing KYC now and then, especially when it's a more established exchange. Um, they also have a referral program, which is not the best because it only pays you accruing dividends for 90 days. So that's something I don't like limit based. I like lifetime rewards. That's how I roll. Uh, even with a lower percentage, um, but I just don't prefer that. But hey, in case you want to sign under me, my code is X E X G eight A A T. So you can find that link down below in case you want to support my work. Um, in terms of the uh, overall profile, there's not really much information here. What you can add the the withdrawal limits. Uh, you can enable SME, SMS verification, Google authentication, anti-phishing code, funding, subscription management, and video authentication even, which is interesting. And it also comes as iTunes and Android device, um, you know, apps for it. So overall, BitThumb is quite a big exchange. So there's a lot of liquidity on this exchange, a lot of security, but it does require a lot of these top tier exchange features. Uh, which I would like call, for example, staking for certain types of coins. And, you know, the maker and taker fees seem to be pretty normal standard. So I don't really have much to complain about. Let's see the USDT here, which we usually use as a comparison. So 70 and 50. Ooh, that is very, very high for USDT. So if you're going to be using Ethereum, this is definitely not the exchange. However, there is the Tron Tron version. Okay, sorry, my bad. The USDT, this is on Omnilayer. So um, the Tether itself is at $25. That's not too bad. And the TRC is $1 fee. So that's okay. So uh, let's scratch that. Overall, there's a, you know, a, a light weight of different types of coins available. It's not exactly like up to the standards in terms of its features compared to some of the other top exchanges, but it is trusted, has been around, 
And far as I know, I don't think they have been hacked like a million times in the past. Pretty much all the major exchanges outside from Coinbase have been hacked at least once. And that is normal. But when a big exchange get hacked, um, it's not so bad because usually the money doesn't get lost. They have a lot of like overflow money, which they can compensate the users and etc. But that's pretty much my review on BitThumb. In case you're interested, you can find the links down below. And I will be seeing you guys on the next video, whenever that may be.